Hello everyone, this is Lekha. Welcome to the series of news podcasts by Sussain Classes. All the news you need and more. Today we'll be picking up two areas of relevance for UPSC. Today in our daily news podcast, we will be discussing United Nations Commemoration and Financial Action Task Force in Pakistan. From here on, we will refer to them as UN and FATF respectively. The first article is on UN. We will quickly read the headlines. The world faces a surplus of multilateral challenges. However, there is a deficit of solutions, says UN chief. UN faces crisis without reform, says Modi. The UN chief is Antonio Guterres. What will we learn about this article? We will see the important facts of the article. Then we will see what is the United Nations, its history, its goals and its relevance in today's world. The main points of the articles are UN had celebrated its 75th anniversary on 21st of September 2020. It was decided in 2019 itself that they will mark this anniversary on this day. There was a high level meeting of the UN General Assembly. This was the first time it was a virtual session and the theme of the session was the future we want the UN we need and reaffirming our faith in collective commitment to multilateralism. They have set goals for the next 10 years, especially on digital cooperation. This UN 75 declaration was signed. It is not mandatory or binding of, and it was made by Qatar and Sweden who facilitated this. This is mainly to commemorate the signing of the UN Charter on 26th June and the UN Day which is celebrated on 24th October. These are important dates. Now we will see some important facts relating to the UN. There are 193 member countries of the UN and over the last 75 years they have had significant achievements. Some of them are immediately after its formation in 1945 they have committed to elimination of nuclear weapons in 1946. In 1948, they have created the World Health Organization, which then dealt with communicable diseases like smallpox, malaria, HIV, and presently even COVID. And they have actually expanded their scope to resolving large number of global issues such as health, environment, women empowerment, among others. In 1950s, the UN created the High Commissioner for Refugees, this was at the backdrop of World War II to help those refugees seek a home and uh, rehabilitate them. The UN also in recently the latest development in, in 2002, they have established a criminal court to try those who have committed war crimes, genocide and other atrocities. Another important year is 1972 where the United Nations Environment Program was created. All of these are very important in the achievements of United Nations. Now we will see what are the main functions of UN. This is the declaration of United Nations. First, there are four main purposes to keep peace throughout the world. We will see why to develop friendly relations among nations, to help nations work together to improve the lives of poor people, to conquer hunger disease, illiteracy and to encourage respect for each other's rights and freedom, to be a center for harmonizing the actions of nations to achieve these goals. Let us look at a brief history of the United Nations. The League of Nations was created under the Treaty of Versailles after World War I. It was created in 1919, but it failed to prevent another world war, which is why it was disbanded. That is why the UN was bought out of the ashes of yet another war. In 1941, when the US had joined the war, President Roosevelt had coined the term UN. It was to identify all those nations who were against the Axis powers. So on January 1st of 1942, 26 allied nations came together in Washington DC to sign the United Nations Charter. So. They, it basically spelled out war objectives for them and it was not a peace, make, peace body. So in the same year, President Roosevelt and Winston Churchill, the pre- Prime Minister of US, met in Placenta Bay. It was a secret meeting. Placenta Bay is 
of the south coast of Canada and they discuss the possibility of an organization which will promote world peace and war of like to issues of war so together they issued a statement which was called the atlantic charter it is not a treaty but it was a affirmation that another organization like the un will be formed so finally this paved the way and over the next couple of years several meetings were took place among the allied big four which is soviet union uk us and china so finally in 1945 on 24th of october the un was formed which after being ratified by 51 countries which included the five members of the security council some aspirations versus reality the united nations proclaimed the universal declaration of human rights in 1948 this is one of the main issues but many of the things regard to education equal pay for equal work nationality all of them are still aspirational some other criticisms are that it failed to prevent the rwandan genocide in 1994 in 2005 the un peacekeeping missions were also accused of sexual misconduct in congo and similar allegations have come for other peacekeeping forces in cambodia and haiti in 2011 the peacekeeping mission south sudan was unsuccessful in eliminating the bloodshed so this are some of the you know shortcomings or some failures of un but the main one is about the universal declaration of human rights but we have a long way to go one interesting fact is the universal declaration of human rights is the most translated document in the world organizational aspects of un The UN has basically six principal organs. First is the General Assembly. It's the main deliberative organ of the UN. It includes all members and each member has one vote. They can discuss any matter under the charter and make recommendations to the UN. And the voting is that of two-thirds majority which will pass a resolution. The next is the Security Council. This is the main organ which takes care of security and peace. and it has five permanent members and 10 members which take part on a two year basis which represent different regions of the world they can convene a meeting at any point especially if a fight breaks out but their main objective is for peace and only then if the situation is out of hand they send a peacekeeping force now then economic and social council UN has many bodies and their main 70% of their work is with regards to economic and social objectives so they hold uh, different uh, schemes and programs so this has around 54 members and uh, they represent different nations from all groups and they coordinate all the economic and social work next is the trusteeship council this was created after world war 2 for the administration of trust territories since the creation of this more than 70 colonial territories including all of the 11 trust territories have gained independence so it is disbanded but it will meet as and when necessary this is one of the significant achievements of un another is the international court of justice this place of sitting is at the hague this is very important it has 15 member panel of judges and it is not mandatory for any country to go to the uh, international court of justice but if they do the judgment is binding on them it has 15 judges from different nations it's elected by the general assembly and security council and they solve legal disputes and now finally the secretariat is made of international staff who works at un headquarters in New York as well as different offices which are in Geneva, Vienna, Nairobi and other locations. The head of this is the UN Secretary General. They uh, uphold all the administrative work. Some of the subsidiary bodies of General Assembly are these. The of the Security Council are these. You can pause and take a look at all of them. But the main work of the Secretariat is they recommend and 
uh, uphold all the decisions taken by the general assembly and the security council and make sure everything takes place and there's a harmony between all of the organs of the un now we will see some highlights of what we have learned the un was formed 75 years ago the october 24th is when it came into force it's known as un day 51 countries ratified the charter the term un was coined by franklin d roosevelt it has six principal organs and this was the theme for this year's un 75 declaration and it has currently 193 member states the second article we will discuss is about the fatf and pakistan the pakistan action on 26 11 under the scanner this is the headlines basically there will be a session of the fatf's regional body asia pacific group to decide on pakistan's gray list status they will meet on october 21st to 23rd but currently the actions under 26 11 terrorist attacks are under the scanner as pakistan is said to have financed them now in this we will see the pakistan's policy towards the fatf standards and what is fatf first the fatf was formed in july of 1989 by g7 countries in paris the g7 countries had also met in vienna that year and they had decided to combat drug trafficking and proceeds from drug trafficking Hence, they came up with the Financial Action Task Force later and it has now included all sorts of money laundering and also combating of terror financing. And recently, they have also included proliferation, non-proliferation of weapons which relate to mass destructions. It's a global money laundering and terrorist financing watchdog. It's an intergovernmental body which has 39 member countries and one observer state which is Indonesia and they set international standards and their aim is to prevent these illegal activities. We must keep in mind that this is not a regulatory body. They just set up standards and they constantly monitor different areas and their jurisdictions and they create lists and these lists are the black and grey lists of which Pakistan is a part of the grey list. They monitor country and they ensure implementation of the standards. They also ensure that every country has a legal framework in place to combat this grey and the blacklist. The grey list is not as negative as the blacklist but both are high risk jurisdictions. This shows that these areas or these countries are non-cooperative with the FATF because they constantly provide them different resolutions and agendas that they have to take uh, implement in their countries so that these activities are not taking place by doing this the FATF hopes to encourage countries to improve their regulatory regimes this is for creation of an infrastructure or a regulatory regime in these countries to prevent combating of terror financing and money laundering and placement of this risk uh, of, on these lists have severe economic deficiencies it reflects this and there are a lot of sanctions placed on these countries and it affects trade negatively which is already seen in Pakistan currently on the blacklist there are two countries Iran and North Korea and both of them have faced severe sanctions which has affected their gdp and international trade now pakistan a part of the gray list for the first time it was placed on the gray list in 2015 and in june 2018 they were placed on the fatf gray list again this is mainly because of terror financing on their soil and recently the un security council had given them 27 measures to prevent going onto the blacklist and they have released a terrorist list which Pakistan was supposed to align with but so far they have not done so out of these 27 measures they have only completed five and also they have gone against the United Nations Security Council's res resolution and they have said that that is false so currently it's being debated whether they should be placed on the blacklist and it will severely affect them since they are having a balance of payments crisis 
they are having a devaluation of currency and extremely poor GDP performance. The highlights of this are Pakistan harbors terrorists. This is why it's placed on the grey list currently and may be placed on the blacklist. FATF is a watchdog and not a regulatory body and Pakistan may move to the blacklist. It will be decided in October by a plenary session. Now coming to our DND section of the day, we will see some daily practice questions. How are the signing countries of Abraham Accords different from Egypt, Jordan in their relationship with Israel? What are the implications of all these on India? What is the status of Pakistan on being reviewed at FATF plenary? What are the contents of the recently passed insolvency and bankruptcy code? What is the cause of death behind the 330 Botswana elephants and why is it raising more questions? Short questions are, who are Navy's first women airborne tacticians to operate from a warship? Write a short note on the status quo of imports from China. These are respectively from different GS papers. You may note this. And now for a prelims practice question. We'll consider the following statements. The MSP for wheat will be increased by 2.6% while last year MSP for wheat had seen a 4.6% increase. MSP rates were also hiked for 5 other winter crops, barley, gram, masoor dal, safflower and rapeseed and mustard. MSP is the rate at which government purchase crops from farmers and based on calculation of at least one fourth by four times the cost of production incurred by farmers. Which of these statements are correct? Please try out all the questions and you can refer to the website of Socian classes for the model answers. From yesterday, Kakati Devi Temple belonged to the Kaktiya dynasty in Dharni Kota near Andhra Pradesh near the capital of Amravati was built by which of the emperors? The answer is D. Ganapati Deva. You can read the note for a brief explanation. This is a wrap on your news podcast. Tomorrow is another day with another news. Please like, share and subscribe.